Molly Ringwald quickly became a star in the 1980s with her roles in iconic films like The Breakfast Club and Pretty in Pink. However, she stepped back from acting in the 1990s, largely due to a traumatic incident. Now, Molly has made a return to acting on her own terms, and her changed appearance is drawing significant attention. Join Facts Buddy as we delve into Molly Ringwald's remarkable transformation. Why Molly Left Hollywood When you ask people to name the most iconic actress of the 1980s, Molly Ringwald often comes to mind. Despite her immense success, Molly decided to step away from Hollywood in the 1990s after a particularly traumatic audition experience. She recalled going to an audition with a male friend, only for the director to unexpectedly ask her to let her friend put a dog collar on her. This was a complete surprise as there was no mention of a dog collar in the script. The bizarre request was so jarring that Molly can't remember if she actually allowed it or not, describing the moment as a full-blown, out-of-body experience. What she does remember clearly is breaking down in tears in the parking lot afterwards. This incident played a significant role in her decision to leave acting for a while. Molly hasn't revealed who the director or her friend was during this unsettling audition, but she has slowly made her way back to the acting world. At 54, she's still stunning but may be hard to recognize for fans who only know her from her famous 1980s roles. She has visibly matured from her girlish looks in the 80s to a more sophisticated appearance now. This physical change mirrors her mental and emotional growth as well. Molly has evolved from the vulnerable girl she once was to a more resilient and mature woman, reflecting on and reconciling with her complex Hollywood past. Molly Ringwald is back in the spotlight. Molly Ringwald's return to the screen, particularly in projects like Not Another Teen Movie and Riverdale, has sparked discussions about her views on some of her earlier works, especially those from the 80s, notably the ones by John Hughes. While Molly hasn't directly accused Hughes of anything, she's been vocal about her concerns regarding some of the content in his films. One film that's drawn considerable scrutiny is Sixteen Candles. It's often criticized for its portrayal of Long Duck Dong, a character played by Gade Watanabe, as a racial stereotype. Despite being a source of humor at the time, it's now seen as problematic. Additionally, there's a scene that many interpret as insinuating rape, which adds to the film's controversial aspects. Molly Ringwald's reservations about Hughes's writing seem to stem from these problematic elements in his films. While she hasn't openly condemned Hughes himself, her critiques have prompted broader discussions about the portrayal of race and sensitive topics in 80s teen movies. It's part of a larger trend of re-evaluating past works through a contemporary lens, acknowledging both their cultural impact at the time and their shortcomings by today's standards. Sixteen Candles is John Hughes's most problematic film. In Sixteen Candles, there's a scene where a jock character trades his drunk girlfriend to a nerd character, implying the possibility of non-consensual sex. Molly Ringwald, who starred in the film, has expressed discomfort with this scene and others in John Hughes's movies. She's hesitant to share these films with her kids because of how they depict relationships and consent. Ringwald also has issues with her character's treatment in The Breakfast Club. These criticisms reflect broader concerns about how older movies handle sensitive topics like consent and character portrayal, prompting discussions about the cultural impact of these films and the need for more responsible storytelling. The Breakfast Club is also problematic. In The Breakfast Club, Molly Ringwald played Claire, who finds herself the object of Judd Nelson's character, Bender's affection, during a detention session. While viewers initially saw it as a budding romance, Molly Ringwald later expressed that Bender's behavior towards Claire could be seen as closer to sexual harassment than genuine pursuit. She believes John Hughes wrote it to be rewarded in the film, despite real-world implications. Despite the film's success and audience approval of Claire and Bender's relationship, 
Molly felt uncomfortable during certain scenes, like when Bender looks under the table at Claire's underwear. She revealed a body double was used for those shots, but still grappled with the idea of her body being represented on screen. These experiences, along with others, influenced Molly's decision to step away from acting in the following decade. Havillian Morris defended John Hughes's writing. Caroline, played by Haviland Morris, was the intoxicated girl in Sixteen Candles, who some argue was raped. Morris has recently stepped forward to support John Hughes amidst discussions re-evaluating his films. She suggests that in the movie, Caroline's actions contribute to her predicament as much as Anthony Michael Hall's character. It's an interesting perspective, adding layers to the interpretation of the film's events and the responsibility of its characters. Molly Ringwald thinks John Hughes is a freak. Molly Ringwald, famous for her roles in John Hughes' iconic 1980s films, has shed light on Hughes' earlier work in National Lampoon, which she finds problematic today. She pointed out that some of his pieces tackled subjects like rape, transsexuality, and sexual harassment with a frat boy angle. Despite this, Ringwald understands why many resonated with Hughes' films back then. She believes they spoke to the misfit teens who felt underrepresented in cinema, yet she's conflicted about the legacy. While she appreciates fans who remember her from those films, she's hesitant about her own kids watching them. After showing her eldest daughter The Breakfast Club, she felt uneasy. This discomfort prompted her to publicly critique the problematic aspects of the movies. What's Molly up to now? After leaving Hollywood due to a traumatic audition, Molly sought solace in Paris, living away from the spotlight for some time. But now she's back and unafraid to confront her past head-on. She openly discusses the problematic aspects of her earlier roles and how they might affect her kids, whom she proudly calls some of the most woke children around. Recently, she shared a snapshot on social media of herself and her youngest daughter watching Pretty in Pink. It's a poignant moment for Molly, realizing that her children will inevitably discover her past roles, but she's ready to navigate those conversations with honesty and reflection. Now it's time to hear from you. Which part of this story was most surprising to hear about? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts Buddy if you haven't already.